We have the core functionality of our application completed, but one thing you might want to consider implementing in really any application, and usually from the start, is setting up the .NET Core host so that we can manage our application's lifetime, we can handle configuration values, we can set up dependency injection, set up logging. There's just so many things you can do with the .NET host, so we are going to set that up for our WPF application. So you're probably most familiar with the .NET host if you've built ASP.NET web applications because it scaffolds that out automatically, but the WPF.NET Core template does not. So we're going to have to set that up manually, and to do that, we are first going to install a NuGet package, and we can probably just search hosting here, and we want microsoft.extensions.hosting. So we're going to install that, and in our app.zamba.cs, so right here in our app constructor, we can take the host, and import that from microsoft.extensions.hosting and we want to create the default builder and now we can just configure everything we want to we can configure services for dependency injection app configuration so we can load values from some kind of app settings.json such as this connection string which i think we will do i don't think we're going to be going into logging that much i have another video on logging because that is an important part of wpf applications but that is optional it is preferred though so i recommend checking that out but we're not going to cover it in this series but what we are going to do is configure our services so this is where we're going to set up our services for dependency injection and we do that with a callback function and this parameter is our service collection where we register the services so we do have some services we want to register such as our i reservation provider the i reservation creator and pretty much everything that we set up in this app constructor we want to manage that in dependency injection so that we can just resolve everything without having to manually pass everything in. So we'll take our services and we are going to add a singleton. So we're going to have to import that from Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. That's what we're doing. And I guess the first thing we're going to register is our Reservoom DB context factory. So we can just pass in the instantiation that we do want to register. So we can just copy this constructor actually cut it and paste it into our registration. And I guess we don't need this type here anymore. And we can remove that down here. So registering something as a singleton means that we're only gonna have one instance of that type shared throughout our application. So every time one of these services requests a Reservoom DB context factory, it's gonna be the same instance. So speaking of those services, let's go ahead and register those in dependency injection as well. And these can be singletons as well. So the I reservation provider, we are gonna to map to a database reservation provider. And then our I reservation creator will be a database reservation creator. And lastly, the reservation conflict validator will be a database reservation conflict validator. And we can now remove these down here. Next up, we have the reservation book. We can register that as, I guess, transient in this case. So the reason we're doing it as transient is because our hotel is going to request a reservation book. And for now, we only have one hotel in our application. So it wouldn't really matter if we registered the reservation book as singleton or transient. But if we had multiple hotels in our application somehow, we wouldn't want every hotel to have the same reservation book. We want them to have different ones. So by registering this as transient, it means that every single time we resolve a reservation book in this case, it's going to be a different instance, which I believe we want in this case. And for this reservation book, since we registered all of its dependencies already, we should be good to resolve that eventually. Next, we have our hotel, and this can actually be registered as a singleton because for our application, we only have one hotel. So just register that. And for the hotel, we actually have to register this with a factory function because we're going to have to manually pass in the string name because we don't register a string in dependency injection. I don't even know if that's possible. I've never really tried, but it wouldn't really make sense. So we're going to use a factory function here, which takes in our services as a parameter. And inside here, we can just instantiate our hotel, pass in the name we want. So Singleton Sean Suites. And then to get our reservation book, we're not just going to instantiate one here. We don't want to do that. Instead, we can use our services parameter here. So this is a service provider, and we can use that to resolve a reservation book. So that'll give us the reservation book from dependency injection that we register. And I guess we don't need this type either. And then lastly, we have our stores. So these are gonna be registered as singleton because stores, as we recall, they manage our application state. So we want that to be centralized in a single instance. So we're gonna register the hotel store and then the navigation store. And that should be everything we need for our services. So let me move this onto a new line, clean it up a little bit. But now lastly, we are going to build our host because right now we're just configuring a host builder, but we got to build it. So let's do that. And that gives us back our host. So the host is going to go into a field in our app. 
So let's generate that field. And we can remove all of these other fields we have because those are gonna be managed in dependency injection now. So now we have our host in the field and now we can use it in our startup. So first we are going to start the host and now we don't have a Resurium DB context factory here, but we can just resolve that from dependency injection. So get the DB context factory using our host services and we are gonna get a required service. So this is resolving it and we're getting our DB context factory. And now we can use that down here. Next, we want our navigation store so that we can do this initial navigation. So we're gonna use our host and resolve the navigation store. And now we can just use that throughout here. And lastly, we have our main window, which also takes a navigation store, but we could just go ahead and register the main window in dependency injection so that we can just resolve it right here. So let me just cut this out. And what we would wanna do is take our host services and resolve some kind of main window, but we're gonna to have to register that. So let's go ahead and do that up here. So I suppose first we could register our main view model. We would want this to be a singleton because we only have one main view model in our application. Of course that could somehow change, but we are gonna keep that as a singleton for now. And then our main window is also gonna be a singleton and we're gonna register this with a factory function. That's gonna give us back our main window and we have to register it like this so that we can manually set our data context here, which is gonna be the main view model that we resolve from our services. And let's clean this up and that should all work. The last issue we have is all of these dependencies that we use down here. So what we're actually gonna do is split all of this up and register all of this in dependency injection. So I actually wanna register this navigation service that takes us to the reservation listing view model. So let's go ahead and do that. Navigation services, those can just be singletons. So we'll add a singleton for our navigation service. And this is actually not going to work. And that is because we have multiple different navigation services and these are the same type. So we can't register the same type twice. That doesn't make any sense. So what we can do instead and it's actually something that I do in my navigation tutorial, but I didn't do here, is we can make our navigation service generic and then enforce tViewModel to inherit from ViewModel base and then just use tViewModel throughout this class, which is still gonna be a ViewModel base. But what this allows us to do is register a navigation service for a specific view model. So we can register this for the reservation listing view model. And then now we can register another one for the make reservation view model. And we're gonna have to account for this generic type all throughout our application now. So navigate commands is gonna have to be generic now for a TV model. And we need that same constraint. So TV model needs to be a view model base, but now we can just use that all throughout this class. And then we just have to update our view models as well. So this is a navigation service for the reservation listing view model and update our navigate commands for that type. We're also gonna have to update the make reservation command because that takes a navigation service. This is gonna be one for the reservation listing view model. That's where it's gonna navigate us to. And then lastly, the reservation listing view model needs a navigation service. This one will take us to the make reservation view model and then just update that in the command as well. And we also have to update our load view model function for the make reservation view model. But now we were able to register both of our navigation services. So that's good. The only issue is that these navigation services take a func for a T view model, which we don't have registered in dependency injection. So that means we're not gonna be able to resolve any of our navigation services, but that's no big deal. We can register these funks. So I'll keep that with my other view models. So we need to register a func. This can just be a singleton. So we need a func to create a make reservation view model. And we'll register this with a callback function. So now that's where it gets weird. We have to register a function. So this function takes no parameters and it's gonna give us back a make reservation view model. So there's multiple ways we could do this. How about we eventually register our make reservation view model in dependency injection so that we can just resolve it here. And there we go, we've registered a func that gives us back a make reservation view model. But now we actually have to register that view model. So we're gonna register this as transient because like we mentioned, view models are gonna be created and destroyed throughout our application so that we can dispose them. So we're gonna register a make reservation view model and we should be able to just resolve this because if we look at this constructor, we have our hotel store registered and we have a navigation service for a reservation listing view model registered. So that should all be good. Now we just have to do the same thing kind of for the reservation listing view model. So let's just copy these, except this time we're registering a reservation listing view model and looking at the constructor for that, 
we have everything registered that that view model needs. So now we just need to register the func for that. And we just resolve that view model from dependency injection. And now we do not need these methods down here. Everything is managed in dependency injection. Uh, except we were using one of those methods. But what is this doing? Well, this is just navigating us to the reservation listing view model. So instead, what we can do is resolve our navigation service for the reservation listing view model here. And now we can just call navigate on that. And that'll do our initial navigation for us. So we got everything registered now. We're starting our host, resolving everything we need. One thing I wouldn't do is whenever we exit the application, we should dispose of our host. But now I'm feeling pretty good. We should have our application functioning. So let's see this in action. And here we go. We hit our view reservations page and I can still navigate around. So that's all good. I don't know where my reservations are. Maybe I deleted my database by accident, but let's create a reservation. There we go. All good and still not displayed. I hope I didn't break anything in a previous video. Let's go ahead and debug this. Oh, you know what? I know what it is. So we're not even hitting any of these breakpoints. And that is because the way we registered our reservation listing view model. So we actually don't want to register it like this because this just calls the constructor and we don't want to call the constructor. We want to call our load view model. So that does the loading for us. So to do that, we are going to have to expand this into a factory function so we can manually call load view model. And then we're going to have to pass in all these parameters manually as well. So let me just move all of this to its own function. So we'll call this create reservation listing view model and that's going to need our services passed to it so that we can resolve everything we need so generate that and in here we can just call load view model and then resolve everything we need from dependency injection so we need our hotel store and we need a navigation service for a make reservation view model all right so that was an easy fix better than expected i was getting worried there but now there we go we're hitting the loading screen and there's all of our reservations and here's the one that we just created so everything is still working fine now what else can we do with the host well we can configure logging but like i mentioned not going to get into that the other thing we can do is configure app configuration so this is how we load configuration values such as from an app settings.json which is what i want to demonstrate so we're going to move our connection string into the app settings.json and maybe our hotel name that'd be cool to put into the app settings as well but let's demonstrate how we do that so first in our project we're going to add an app settings.json i believe it's a file type all right i don't see it in any of these so what we're going to do is just select json file and we'll call this app settings.json and we can have a connection strings object here so expand that into an object and we'll just call our connection string default and then we'll just paste in our connection string so let's grab that from the app.xamba.cs pretty simple so just cut that out, plop it in our app settings.json, and we can remove that here now. So now we just need to get our connection string here from our app settings.json and then pass that in. So how are we going to load that connection string? Well, first, what we can do is change this callback so that we get our host builder context. So what this is going to do is take two parameters, the host context and our services again, which we use to register. So if we look at these parameters, we still have our service collection but we also have this host builder context so we can use this host builder context and we can get the configuration so this configuration is going to contain our app settings.json values so we can get a connection string so import that method from microsoft.extensions.configuration and we named our connection string default and that actually gives us back our connection string so we can use that value and then just pass it into our db context factory but i did say we are going to have to configure app configuration so that we load our app settings.json so something like this open this up with a callback and we get our configuration builder and we would want to add a json file and point to our app settings.json but we actually don't have to do this because create default builder this default builder does this automatically for us so we don't have to configure it here we get all of that for free that's wonderful but let's put a breakpoint here and make sure we get our connection string because we might have to change some properties on the app settings.json not entirely sure but let's check and yeah our connection string is null so i think what we have to do is come over to our app settings.json and configure the properties for that and we want to copy this to the output directory i guess only if newer that should be good and there we go now we have our connection string so i believe the issue was that our app settings.json wasn't being copied to our bin where the application is being executed from. So the application just couldn't find the file, but now it can because we copied it to the bin on build 
And now there we go, our connection string works and we load all of our data. So that is the main power of the host. The other thing you might wanna consider is logging, but I think I've said this like three times already. I covered that in another video. I suppose the other thing I'll mention, if you did wanna clean up your app.xaml.cs, what you could do is in our project, we could create a new folder for host builders. I guess you could name this whatever you wanted and we'll create a new class in this folder. And I guess for this example, we'll call this the add view models host builder extensions. And inside here, we'll just have a static method that'll give us back our host builder, but we'll call this add view models. And this is an extension method. So we're going to prefix our host builder with this so we can call it fluently. And this class actually needs to be static because we have an extension method inside of it. But now in our app.xaml.cs, we can move over everything related to view models. So just cut it out of here and we can use our host builder and configure services, get our services call back in here and paste in all of our view model service registrations. So we're gonna have to import all of this junk. We need our create reservation listing view model function in here. So we created that earlier so that we could do our load view model manually. So let's just cut that out of the app.xaml.cs, paste it in here. This will have to be static. And then finally just return the host builder from this method now that we've configured it. So now we have our view model stuff separated, which cleans up our app.xaml.cs. And now all we have to do is we can call our extension method, add view models. So import that, we could move our main view model in there as well. So our app.xaml.cs is a little bit more concise. You could go through and do this for all of your other services. You could have some kind of add stores, maybe an add services and add models. And then you would just go through and call all of those extension methods. So like I said, the benefit of that is that the app.xaml.cs is more split up. But one drawback is that now all of our service registrations aren't consolidated in one single place. So it might be a little bit more difficult to find things when you need to change them. Although it is more organized, like if you had to change something with view models, you would know to go to the add view models host builder extensions. But I don't know. I guess there really is no right or wrong way. If there is, I really couldn't tell you because I really don't know. Even though I've tried both ways, I really can't tell which one I prefer better. But I just wanted to demonstrate it real quick, just to throw it out there if it's something you're interested in doing. So we got our host builder set up, we registered our services, and we even set up an app settings.json for our connection string. So hopefully you find this helpful for your own applications. So you can manage your application's lifetime, register and configure all of your services, set up logging if you're interested in that, and then set up configuration values in an app settings.json. As for myself, this is something that I usually like to set up in my own applications. But anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. We forgot to move our hotel name into the app settings.json. Let's cut that out, plop that in here, the hotel name set that value and then get that down here so the hotel name will come from our host context configuration and we are going to get the value of our hotel name key which is a string and then we just pass that in and there we go single to chunk suites let's go